And here we are again, guys. I know it may feel like a few little bit uh, since you've done Discrimination Chapter 43, Part 1, and to now, but guess what? It has only been like, I would say, 30 seconds, so I can jump from Part 1 to Part 2. So you may feel like it's a long time since we've talked, but for me, hey, it just happened 30 seconds ago. Ha! Huh? I know. I'm silly. Let's begin here, guys. We're going to finish Chapter 43, Part 2. This is a little bit longer. I hope that it is not as, it may be more slides, but I'm going to try to not talk as much, so it is about the same length or a little bit shorter than Chapter, the part, first part. So, let's see if we can do that. Go Moving on. Okay, so we talked about discrimination. We talked about the different tests on how judges would decide whether it is unconstitutional or constitutional. Again, I apologize for those tests and making you confused, but let's keep on going. So now to the Roe versus, uh, not Roe versus Wade, I'm sorry, that's for something else. Brown versus the Board of Education desegregated schools. And here are some methods that the uh, federal government and state governments did in order to do this, to integrate schools. One was allowing students to attend any school they desired. So pretty much it wasn't anymore. You weren't really said that you had to go to said school. Also, they redrew neighborhood school boundary lines, okay? So they redrew them so it mixed up the races, mixed up black and white, Hispanics, all of that. So it wasn't where, you know, one neighborhood of uh, white Americans were going to, to one school and another neighborhood was decided that these African Americans are going to this school. No, they redrew the line so it kind of broke it up and integrated uh, they transferred teachers, so um, teachers in a wide variety, different variety of teachers. We all know that teachers are different, and uh, some appeal to others in that. It was mixed up that way. And also uh, developed magnet schools and charter schools that uh, drew in certain interests, certain people, um, and busing. And I said on chapter part one, I stopped talking about busing because I remembered that it was going to be here, and it is. Now, busing in the beginning you was used to segregate schools, okay? So they would go in and they would bus p uh, kids a long distance away it's to segregate. So so African Americans would go to one school and um, uh, white Americans would go to another school. So that was, they used it to segregate. Now they're going to switch it around and they're going to use busing to integrate schools okay so they're going to be bringing certain students from a distance away in order to integrate okay now it actually that was shown it didn't yeah it was right after uh, the board so that was in the 1960s 70s 80s by the late 1990s school system parents and courts agreed that busing students did not achieve what it was intended to do. So what it was intended to do was they wanted African-American students' grades and test scores. They believed that if they were able to get them out of, uh, into a, a school where it was integrated, where there was multiple races there, they believed that test scores and grades would be elevated. Okay, what they found out was that that integrating or that bringing that group of African Americans or Hispanic Americans or any minority group into this school where it was integrated did not raise grades. It did not raise grades at all. So after that, they went away from this uh, this uh, idea of busing students distance in order to integrate. So they did it different ways, but. Busing was not used after the late 1990s when it was found that its purpose was not happening. Another discrimination education is um, affirmative action. Okay, we've t heard about this before. It means um, affirmative action means taking steps to remedy past and current discrimination in employment and education. Now, if you guys are uh, football fans. Um, you may hear of the Rooney Rule, especially at the end of a season when they call it, what do they call it, Black Monday, the day after the, the last Sunday of uh, regular season football. Black Monday is where a lot of the coaches that had losing records um, get fired. Well, during this interviewing process, there is called it's called the Rooney Rule. And it is an NFL policy for interviewing, oh, interviewing coaches, yes, and it is, you have to have a certain quota of minority coaches interviewed. There is no rule that you have a certain quota has to be hired, 
but each team has to interview at least a few minority in their coaching pool. Okay. Now the picture down there are some um, head coaches that have been hired in the past. They may be coaches yet, but they may not be. But just the idea, the Rooney Rule is a type of affirmative action that takes place in uh, the NFL. Discrimination against employment. Um, Civil Rights Act of 1964 um, prohibited discrimination in employment based on race, color, sex, religion, national origin by businesses with more than 15 employees or by labor unions. Title VII was an um, was where this was title Title VII was where this was. Um, I'm sorry, the title se Title VII of the Civil Rights Act did this. Uh, times that employment di discrimination is legal. So there are some times. There's not many, but this one, which makes sense after I read it. Example would be theatrical companies may require that only women apply for female parts in a play. Now, discrimination in voting rights. You know, states do have the power to control their elections, okay? Thus, there will be some discrimination that is permitted. Um, minimum voting age, we have to be 18 in order to, uh, to do that. Citizenship, you must be a U.S. citizen. And you have to have a minimum residency. I think in order to vote in your district, you have to live there for 30 days, I believe. Um, so yeah, um, you have to, there are some minimum or some things that you have to do in order to vote. Yes, are we, is it technically a discrimination against... Uh, 16 year olds or is it technically a discrimination against a Canadian or a Mexican uh, who lives in or a Hispanic who lives in here you know yes but yet those are our, um, our requirements and it is legal now gerrymandering are is the redrawing of voting district lines this was at one time used to divide up minority groups okay um, so, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, groups, whether they are, whatever they tend to, uh, whatever group they are, tend to vote the same way. And depending on who is, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I talk about this and it sounds horrible, but it happens, depends on who is in leadership and that they may go in and redraw lines in order to do what they feel like they need to do. However, now that was, it's, that was passed. Now, due to segregation and due to desegregation and de, um, discrimination, anti anti discrimination laws, they're doing it the opposite. So now they are redrawing districts where minority groups are the majority, and these are called majority minority districts. So, um, if you have a district of oh, I would say I don't know any district um, of let's. A minority, let's think of a minority in North Dakota. or So a minority in North Dakota would let African American, if there's an African American population, let's say in Fargo, a neighborhood, you know, in order to create this anti-minority um, groups, um, which they used to do, they would kind of uh, group them together in order to have a majority-minority district. Kind of giving their voice more power. If you split some, if you split a group up, their voice is lessened. If you put it together, their voice is strengthened. That's the idea of now gerrymandering these majority minority districts. The discrimination based on gender. This goes all the way back to the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848. This was the first women's right convention. And what comes out of this is the right for women to vote. Women's suffrage. And we know that eventually, by 1922, women have the right to vote in the United States of America. And North Dakota Studies people... Scream it out loud. Scream it to the top of your lungs so I can hear it when I ask you this question, okay? So, when in North Dakota did women get the right to vote, get the right to vote, and only in the state elections? Okay, throughout the week, I want to be walking around and I want to be hearing people yell, 
1917. Yes, 1917. North Dakota was ahead of the federal government, and in 1917, women had the right to vote in state elections, not federal elections. Equal Pay Act in 1963 made it illegal to pay women less money than men doing for doing the same amount of job. Um, even though there is, there was in, in 1963, even today there has been cases where um, women do not get paid the same. So it's still a work in progress. And Title IX, Title IX, we've heard of this before. Title IX allows um, the equal rights for women females to in uh athletics and in um um oh i'm sorry in um like colleges and that stuff so um you'll see that sometime around the 1990s uh some sports team sports uh, groups athletic groups in colleges were dropped because women and men have to have the same amount of sports teams um, that was one thing I know in VCSU was just one. Um, the wrestling program was cut because of just to be um, uh, evening the title in Title IX. Okay, here we go. Let's go on. Okay, discrimination based on sexual orientation. So throughout much of history, homosexual sexuality has been viewed as um, taboo and often considered a crime. Um, prior to 1962, most in all states, homosexuality was considered a crime. But in 1962, Illinois was the first state to decriminalize it. Then over the next few decades, states followed. And in um, 2003, Supreme Court, Lawrence v. Texas, it decriminalized homosexuality and therefore in the United States of America, it no longer was... Um, criminal behavior. Um, throughout that time, um, certain states started to allow and legalize same-sex marriage. Um, 37 states before 2015 allowed same-sex marriage. In June, 20, June uh, 26, 2015, um, Oberg, Obergfell versus Hodges and this is where Supreme Court struck down all state bans on same-sex marriage. So therefore, it was legal to marry, um, to be able to marry a um, person of your same gender in all states. This also provided a lot of uh, rights for uh, couples, same-gender couples, whether as, you know, they, now they're able to... Um, have the same amount of rights as a uh, a different gender couple would have. So that really took a lot of the legal discrimination away. Um, it may be, you know, nowadays homosexuality, people, our names, people who are homosexual are show that uh, they're open a lot more. It is a, It is a lot more accepted by the public compared to it was... 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago. Okay, so it is, is more out in the public. Legal, uh, law, legally, we have, there is no more discrimination, but that doesn't mean that um, socially in our everyday lives and everyday lives of people that they don't, are not discriminated against yet. Same thing with all other minority groups. I mean, we legally, we are working on Legally, it's come a long ways, but yet there's still a ways to go, and socially, we have a ways to go. Discrimination based on age. The Age Discrimination and Employment Act protected work protects workers age 40 or older, and it for, forbids discrimination in hiring, firing, paying, and promoting. Um, this also law applies to, um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, protects youth as well. Kids younger, you know, it protects them from not, you know, being, if they're being discriminated against their age. However, a majority of these cases that come up are for people who are older. Um, this law uh, applies to private employers of 20 or more people, labor unions, government agencies, and employment agencies. There are some exceptions. Exceptions um, does not apply if age is a job qualification. Well, it kind of, that kind of goes down to that acting 
an acting role again, okay? So if the person has to be uh, a teenager uh, in this role, they can't, uh, I'm sorry, but a 40, 50 year old person is not going to be able to pass as a teenager. There you go. So therefore, it's not discriminating against if you, if your age, if you're not a teenager. Or if there is a good reason other than age to not hire or fire somebody. So this is an idea of um, maybe maybe the individual is over 40, but they did some, um, some of their job things were, um, they weren't doing other things well. They may have did something where they got in trouble in that job, and even though they're over 40, they're getting fired because they did something wrong, or they did a series of things that were wrong, and they didn't change their um, habits. And then discrimination based on disability. Disability is the difficulty of performing certain basic functions, or has the difficulty of performing basic activities of daily living. Uh, U.S. Census Bureau says one in five Americans have a disability, and one in ten have a severe disability. Severe disability is a person who is unable to perform. A person with a severe disability is a person who is unable to perform one or more daily activities. Um, daily activities. Now. I'm going to quick pause here and I want to tell you something. As you can see, when I'm describing some of these things of um, with disabilities, and it can be anything that, um, uh, it's called people first language. I had learned this in uh, college. So at first I said disability people or uh, disability, severe disability people, that is not person first. And I always try to do person or people first language. So instead I would have said a person with severe disability. A person that is blind, I'm not going to say a blind person or a deaf person, I'm saying a person who is deaf or a person who is blind because I believe in what I was taught that that disability does not um, define the person. So if I say a deaf person, well I'm defining that person as deaf. No, that person isn't defined by their disability of deaf, being deaf. It is a person who is deaf, that has a big beautiful life that just can't happen to hear. So as you can see, you might hear me correct myself. I'm correcting myself on people first language. Uh, Rehabilitation Act of 1973, the act discriminates in employment and requires employers who receive federal benefits to set up programs to assist people with disabilities. Uh, the Individuals with Disabilities Act, IDEA or IDEA 1975, requires states to provide a free and appropriate education to children with special needs in a least restrictive setting. So, um, and then the Americans with Disability Acts, the ADA 1990, prohibited from discriminating against people with disabilities in private businesses. Um, public accommodation services provided by state and local governments, transportation, telecommunications. This was viewed as the biggest... Um, uh, biggest government action to help di uh, persons with disabilities uh, since the Civil Rights Act in 1965. So since 1965 and 1990, that was another huge win for the uh, the uh, the pop uh, the the, dis the people with disabilities group. See, I caught myself twice. I was going to say disabled people, but it's people with disabilities. That is not a rule by anybody that you have to do people first language, but it is something that I live by that I want to sue. So thank you again. We will see if this is small or shorter than 19 minutes. I do not know. But thank you again. After this, you're going to answer two questions on the blue link below. The comprehension questions, it should say chapter 43, part two comprehension questions. And there are only two, not three, two questions. I only gave two this time for part one and part two. All right, guys, thank you. Good luck. We'll talk to you later.